my dear students already you know about the gauss theorem gauss law and electric flux now the gauss theorem states that the total electric flux over the closure surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times of total charge enclosed by the surface this is the expression already you know this one now there are important three derivation out of three derivation it is the first one now you obtain the expression for the electric field at a point due to infinitely long straight charged wire here xy now see here in the diagram xy is the charged wire it is infinitely very long this one it cannot uh, uh, draw in on the uh, that is a board but you have to take this is simply x y is used to be infinitely long straight charged wire of length l enclosed by the charge q length is l enclosed by the charge ok now lambda is equal to q divided by l is the linear charge density lambda is equal to what you say q by l already you know this one the linear charge density say equation number 1 this so, delta s is the small area. Now you draw the cylindrical surface. It is the Gaussian surface. Imagine whatever the charge is on the straight wire, same charge is on the surface of the cylinder or you said to be cylindrical surface that is also enclosed by the charge Q. If any charge is the cylindrical surface mele, Adhe charge zero tanta to go. Yes, what is Gaussian surface? The surface in which the charge is distributed. Then Gauss theorem is applicable for that surface. That surface is called Gaussian surface. Here, this cylindrical surface you say to me imaginary Gaussian surface. P is the point at distance R from the charge perpendicular distance. R is the perpendicular distance from the point P to the charge wire. P is the point at the distance R. Then you draw the cylinder. Now R becomes radius of the cylindrical surface. Now, what is the total area of the cylindrical surface? 2 pi Rf. Now, total electric flux over the cylindrical surface is a pi is equal to E into 2 pi Rl. It means so electric flux is what to say here e into delta s into cos theta here theta is a, whatever the electric field line is perpendicular to this one now now you have to theta equal to zero what if pi is equal to e into delta s instead of delta s you take area instead of area e into 2 pi r l you have to take here total electric flux for the cylindrical surface 2 pi r l now the total charge total charge on cylindrical surface total charge on cylindrical surface yes q into lambda r because lambda is equal to q into r then by gauss law by gauss law pi is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times of total charge 1 by epsilon naught to total charge now charge is Lambda into L, lambda into L divided by epsilon naught. You say equation number 4. This is the total electric flux equation. This is also total electric flux equation. Equate these two equations. E into 2 pi RL. E into 2 pi RL is equal to lambda L by epsilon naught. Lambda L divided by epsilon naught. L get cancelled here. Remain here. That is E into 2 pi R is equal to lambda divided by epsilon naught again you have to take 2 pi on this side e is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi r epsilon naught what about the expression finally e is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into r it is the expression for the electric field at a point due to the infinitely large charged wire now see here this is proportional to lambda 
electric field at this point is directly proportional to the linear charge density. Then this electric field is inversely proportional to distance of the point from the charge wire. That is the perpendicular distance from the charged wire. This is about the expression for the electric field at a point due to the charge wire. This is the ask in the examination for 3 mark by using you obtain the expression for the electric field at a point due to the infinitely large charge wire. Good evening, my dear students. Now, the next very important derivation that is electric field at a point nearest point to the due to the uniformly charged infinite plane sheet. Now, in the <clears throat> board that is said to be finite diagram, it is a finite sheet. It is, uh, it is very difficult to draw the infinite, but it is assumed to be infinite. It is a charged plane sheet. And uh, P and uh, Q are the two nearest points <coughs> to the charged plane sheet. Two nearest points, <coughs> two nearest points P and Q. Suppose it is the charged plane sheet, it is the nearest point on either side of the charged plane sheet. If plane sheet charge either illu charge or illinu charge. E surface will charge it, E surface will charge it. And P and Q are at a distance R from the charged plane sheet. Now A is the area around the points P and Q. P and Q are the two points near to the charged sheet. A is the area around P and Q. E is the electric field. So after the expression for this one, electric field. R distance of the points P and Q from the sheet. Now, according to definition of the surface charge density, the surface charge density sigma is equal to total charge divided by area. Now, it is a this is the pill box you have to draw here. Pill box. This uh, pill box is imaginary Gaussian surface enclosed by the charge Q. At that time, charge enclosed by this point is Q. Charge enclosed by this point is also low. What do you say? There is Q. Surface charge density Q divided by A. Now, charge Q is equal to surface charge density into A. Now, total electric flux over the pill box. The pill box is assumed to be imaginary Gaussian surface. What do you say? Imaginary, imaginary Gaussian, imaginary Gaussian surface. Now see here, at the end of the pill box, there is the electric field. Suppose this is the pill box. This is the pill box. This is the pill box. At the end, there is the electric field. Around this point, there is no electric field. Why? Because compound becomes zero. Because the line you have to take theta nine. Theta is said to be 90 degree. Cos 90 degrees equal to 0. Yes. Electric flux over this area, point P, is a E into A. Electric flux. It means electric field into area. Already yesterday class I explained here. Here, in this case, theta equal to 0. What do you say this one? E A cos theta. But theta equal to 0 cos theta becomes what you say 1. Therefore, electric flux for the area A around the point P is a E into A. Electric flux, the electric flux around the point P over the area is E into A. Electric flux over this area at the another end of the pill box that is also E into A. But the surrounding around the pill box, around the pill box the electric field is equal to 0. This is total electric flux over the pill box. Now, pi is equal to 2Ea equation number 2 by Gauss law. This is the imaginary Gaussian surface <coughs> by Gauss theorem. One, 
1 by total electric plus 1 by epsilon naught times of the total charge enclosed by the surface Q divided by epsilon naught. But Q is equal to sigma into A. Now substitute sigma into A divided by epsilon naught. Equate these two equations. Equation number 2 and equation number 3. What you got? 2EA is equal to sigma A divided by epsilon naught. E is equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. Equation number 4. It is the expression for electric field at a point at a point due to the charged plane sheet infinitely large plane sheet and the points are very near to the charged sheet in vector form E is equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught n cap n cap is the unit vector perpendicular to this plane sheet now you see here from this expression this, is, this term is constant therefore electric field is directly proportional to the surface charge density. Surface charge density is the same electric field is the same. This is 3 or 5 mark derivation. You practice it in your home. Thank you. Good evening, my dear students. I want to explain the last point in this chapter. It is electric field at a point due to uniformly charged spherical shell shell it means inside that is one is gap that is a shell here it is uniformly charged with the charge Q of radius capital letter R O is the center of the spherical shell now it is charged with the charge Q now P is the point at a distance R from the center of the spherical shell now you obtain the expression for the electric field uh, at this point due to the charge of the spherical shell. But it is a dotted line is the imaginary Gaussian surface, which is the spherical surface which is passing through the point. Around the point, this is a small area delta s of the Gaussian surface. Now, these are the electric field lines. They are normal to the spherical shell. It is outward, outward electric flux. Now, the electric flux over a Gaussian surface. Electric flux over the Gaussian surface. Pi is equal to summation over E into delta S cos theta. But here theta is 0. Pi theta is 0. Now, this is the area. Now, this is a perpendicular to this one here theta equal to 0 theta is not, is not 90 degree why because the electric field is perpendicular to this area if it is not perpendicular at that time you draw the uh, you take the uh, component of the electric field and but it is no question of component because it is a perpendicular therefore theta is 0 but not 90 degree now theta is equal to 0 cos theta is equal to 1 pi electric flux summation over E into delta S only E into summation over delta S E delta S area na ashtunum kudusu vayka E delta S area over the surface ashtunum kudusu vayka No, summation over delta S total spherical surface area 4 pi R square distance of the point R it becomes a radius of the Gaussian surface Radius of the spherical shell is capital letter R but radius of the Gaussian surface is small letter R. This uh, distance of the point P becomes a radius of the Gaussian surface. Now summation of delta S is 4 pi R square. You substitute here pi is equal to E into 4 pi R square equation number 1. By Gauss theorem. What is Gauss theorem? Total electric flux over the closed surface Gaussian surface is 1 by epsilon naught times of the total charge enclosed by the surface. Now we equate these two equations. This is electric flux, this is electric flux. Equate these two equations. E into 4 pi r square is equal to 1 by epsilon naught. Now it's q. Now E is equal to q divided by 4 pi r square epsilon naught. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q divided by r square. It is in the vector form. Vector E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q divided by r square into r cap. Now here, if the point outside the cell means small letter R is small letter R is greater than R. 
Now, this expression is same as the electric field at a point due to the point charge. If you have a point charge, this point is the electric field equation. No, that's one by four pi epsilon naught q divided by r square. What is the meaning of this one? It is the same as the electric field at the point due to the point charge. It means the total charge of the charged spherical shell assumed to be concentrated at the center of the spherical shell. So I repeat, the total charge of the charged spherical shell is assumed to be concentrated at the center of the spherical shell. Now we come to the point, second point. If the point on the shell, point on the shell, point delivered the shell mirror. Point on the cell at that time, point here, R is equal to R, R is equal to R. What is E? E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q divided by capital letter R square. Q divided by 4 pi R square into 1 by epsilon naught. Now, charge divided by total area is surface charge density, sigma. Therefore, sigma is equal to, now here, sigma is, uh, that is, uh, Q divided by, 4 pi r square sigma is equal to q by a area area total area is 4 pi r square of the spectral cell is sigma divided by epsilon naught equation number 6 hence uh, this is e proportional to sigma the electric field at any point on the surface of the charge spectral cell is directly proportional to the surface charge energy. yes if the point inside the cell point inside the cell point will lead to I mean point will leave under the point inside the cell. Now there is no contribution of charge inside the cell. Therefore, electric field at a point inside the charge spherical cell is equal to zero. What is the electric field at a point inside the charge spherical cell? It is zero. It is a, one of the very important derivations is asked in the examination continuously three or four times in the uh, annual examination or supplementary exam. Okay, this is for five marks or the point uh, outside the cell or is it a point on the uh, charger spectral cell. Okay, thank you.